Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I want to talk about the Excel 2019 exam, and we're going to look at the domain for the exam called Manage Tables and Table Data. Overall, this accommodates for 15 to 20% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at this with me. In today's video, we're going to look at the subdomain Create and Format Tables, Modify Tables, and Filter and Sort Table Data. Let's go ahead and jump into Excel. In today's video, we're looking at the Excel 2019 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Manage Tables and Table Data. We're on the subdomain Create and Format Tables. The first thing it tells us that we should be able to do is create Excel tables from cell ranges. If I select my range A4 to K9, with that range selected, I can actually make a table and format a table at the same time from the Home tab in the Styles group and just click Format as Table, and it will make it a table and apply a style. But if you only wanted to make it a table, if I go to the Insert tab in the Tables group and click Table, this window will verify my range. My data does have headers, so we'll leave that box checked and we'll click OK. And now this has been made a table. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to apply table styles. With my cursor within this table, I get the Table Tools Design tab. This is where you're going to do a lot of things for tables if you have a task question like this. Where we want to be is the Table Styles group, and within this section, I have the light, medium, and dark groupings, and those group headings will help you on the exam if it has you apply a medium. You're going to look in this medium section for what you need to apply until you find what it wants you to select. So for this, we'll select the blue table style medium 9, and we've gone ahead and applied that style to the table. If that's not what you needed, it's a quick click on this drop down and selecting something that you need. And finally, we're told that we need to be able to convert tables to cell ranges. And so with my cursor in this data, again, we're on the Table Tools Design tab, and what we want to do is select Convert to Range. If I click that, it's asking, do you want to convert the table to a normal range? The answer is yes. And so what this has done is it's left the formatting that was applied with my styles, but this is no longer a table and won't function as a table. We're on the subdomain Modify Tables. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to add or remove table rows and columns. If I put my cursor in this table, and let's say I want to add a new column to the left of E, if I right click in this table and click Insert, notice that I have the option of adding a table column to the left or I can add a table row above. Let's go ahead and select Columns to the left. And notice that it went ahead and it added a brand new column to this table. Same thing with a row if I wanted to do that. Now, it also tells us that we need to be able to remove table rows or columns. By habit, I tend to want to select columns and delete by selecting them and clicking delete to remove that. And that's fine. But this is where you want to be careful, especially on this exam. You want to read the question carefully because maybe that's not how they want you to do it. Let's look to the right. I currently have information in P8. And if I went ahead and selected row 8 and clicked delete, notice that's gone. And that's why it's going to be important on the exam. Maybe there's information outside of the table. And if you delete the entire row, you might remove it all. For a task question like this, you just want to be in the table. You can right click, go to delete, and then you have the option for table column or row. And for this, we'll select table row. And notice that my table row disappeared and my information over here on the right didn't get removed. So make sure that you add or delete columns or rows exactly how they want you to do it on the exam. This subdomain tells us that we also need to be able to configure table style options. So with my cursor in this table, I have the table tools design tab. And let me go ahead and scroll back over in my worksheet. There's a lot of information in this. In the previous subdomain, we looked at table styles, but there's a lot more in this section than just that. Right here in the table style options, we have the option to have a header and banded rows. Watch what happens when I click off of header row. Notice that that information just disappears. And you see this banding where it alternates colors. If I uncheck that, notice it's just now all one color. And there's a lot of different features that you can put in here. 
In addition to that, some things to note is the ability to remove duplicates. And we've already talked about convert to range in the previous subdomain. The final thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert and configure total rows. That's this box right here, total row. And notice a new row was added, and currently it's adding all of the hours over here on the right-hand side. I can change that, though. Instead of sum, maybe I just want to do the max number that's there, and that's 42. And maybe for Wednesday, I want to get the average. So with that drop-down, I can select average. And each one of these cells has the ability to make a different calculation. For the exam, if you're asked to carry out a task question that involves tables, most likely what you need to do can be found on the Table Tools Design tab. So make sure you've selected your table and that you're on this ribbon because, again, most of the task questions involving tables will most likely be found here. We're looking at the subdomain called Filter and Sort Table Data. Most tables that you encounter are already going to have the filter feature, but for whatever reason, if yours does not, you want to make sure that you're in the row that you need to be. On the Data tab in the Sort and Filter group, you can add a filter by clicking this Filter button. But again, most tables that you see are going to have the table feature. And you can know that your table has a table feature because in the bottom right-hand corner of your cell, you're going to have a little drop-down box. That is the filter. Let's go ahead and look at using some filters. Let's look at the Wednesday filter. If I click this drop-down, you have a lot of features within this filter, such as sorting. You can do a simple sort by smallest or by largest. You can also sort by color. What I normally use a filter for is right down below. If I had an empty cell, it would have blank here. I could easily filter out blank data by just unchecking that box. Or if I only wanted to look at the cells that have information for 9 and 10, I could just unselect 7 and 8 and click OK. And notice that only those two employees are now showing. Let's go ahead and bring back in all of that data so that you can see how easy it is just to flip back and forth between data. But within this section, there's some other things you should look at. We have number filters here. You can do equals, does not equal. In my own personal work, I often use the greater than or equal to. Of course, you have above average or below average, and you can select a custom filter. There's really a lot in there. But you also have text features, and this data set's not great for the filter feature specifically, but we do have some text features, such as equals or does not equal. It begins with, ends with, contains, does not contain, and then we have that custom filter. The great thing is, you can apply multiple filters to this table. So let's look at opening up the total hours filter. We're going to do a number filter here, and we'll do greater than or equal to 35. So anything equal to or greater than 35 will display. And on Monday, maybe we just want to uncheck the three so that only these two employees are shown. Filters are great if you need to quickly look through data on the exam. It's something that you could see. The other thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to sort data by multiple columns. Let's go ahead and clear our filter so that we see all of our data. And I have a tendency of selecting all of my data within the table, but if I have my cursor within this data or select a range, it will ask me to expand it out. I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm in the Editing group. I'm going to click the Sort and Filter drop-down, and I'm going to select Custom Sort. This window is going to allow me to sort my data with multiple criteria. Our column, because it has headers, will be easy to do. Let's do first name. We'll do cell values, and A to Z is fine. Let's do add level. For the second sort criteria, let's choose Wednesday. We can change our sort from cell values to color to font color. There's a lot in this little section, but we want our cell values, so we'll keep that. And then we have smallest to largest. We have largest to smallest. But you also have the option of creating a custom list. And if I click that, it opens up a brand new dialog box. This feature is a little bit advanced, but you should know that you have the ability to create a custom list. Once you've selected all the criteria that you want for your sort, you can click OK. And within our data, we can see that it went ahead and sorted by first name alphabetically. And then because there's no conflicting alphabetical letters, it just kept that sort. But if we look here, we can see that it's also being sorted on Wednesday as well. If we had multiple Alexis's, the second criteria sort would have taken into effect.